In this video, we'll cover correlation. Correlation is the measure of association that we use for interval level data. The example I'll use in this video is number 14 from the textbook, which states, Obesity in children is a major concern because it puts them at risk for several serious medical problems. Some researchers believe that a major issue related to this is that children these days spend too much time watching television and not enough time being active. Based on a sample of boys of roughly the same age and height, data were collected regarding hours of television watch per day and weight. Compute a Pearson's correlation coefficient and indicate whether the correlation is significant. In this case, our x, or number of hours spent watching TV, is given here, and our y, or weight in pounds, is given here. Correlation utilizes deviation scores. And so the first step is I calculated the average or mean number of TV hours watched and the mean weight for each of the individuals. The next thing I'll do is calculate the deviation scores, which is equal to the individual score minus the mean number of TV hours watched. Because I want to copy this formula for the rest of the cells, I need to put dollar signs after the C and the 14 to tell Excel not to move from the cell containing the mean. Now I can click and drag and copy these scores into the remaining cells. I will do a similar calculation for Y to calculate deviations. Again, this is equal to the individual's weight minus the mean weight. And I'll copy these into the remaining cells as well. As mentioned in a previous video, deviation scores should sum to zero. And so in order to check whether I calculate the deviations correctly, I will sum this column and I should get a result of zero which I do for both the x and y deviations. Pearson's correlation coefficient, indicated by r, is equal to the product of the deviations divided by the square root of the squared deviations of x times the squared deviations of y. The long form of this equation is given here. In order to calculate the numerator and denominator, I will need to determine the product of the deviations as well as square each of the deviations for x and y. So first I'll create a column for the sum of the products, and this is equal to the deviation score for x times the deviation score for y. Next, I'll calculate the square deviations for x and y in order to calculate the denominator. For x, this is equal to our deviation score for x squared. And I'll copy this into the remaining cells. I will then do the same for y. The sum of squared deviations for y is equal to the deviation for y squared. And again, I'll copy that into the remaining cells. Finally, we will sum each of these terms. So the sum of the products is equal to sum, parentheses, our column of products, close parentheses. And I can copy that across for our sum of squares columns as well. Now we can calculate our correlation coefficient. r is equal to the sum of the product of the deviations divided by the square root, or sqrt, parentheses, of the sum of squared deviations for x times the sum of squared deviations for y, close parentheses. This gives us a result of 0.98. R varies between negative one and positive one. 
The sign tells us whether we have a positive association or a negative association, and the magnitude tells us the strength of that correlation. In this case, we have a very strong positive correlation, meaning that the more hours an individual spends watching television, the higher their weight, and the fewer hours spent watching TV, the lower one's weight. The textbook also provides a computational formula, which makes calculating the correlation coefficient slightly easier. For this formula, we simply need a column for the product of x and y, squared x and squared y. So I'll create a column for each of those terms. And for the x times y column, I'll simply type equals the individual's x or hours spent watching television times their weight or y and copy that into the remaining cells. For squared x's, I'll simply take the individual x and square it. And do the same for y equals the individual weight squared. Now, as before, I'll sum each of these columns. This is equal to sum parentheses, and select the column, close parentheses, and I can copy this into the remaining two cells. Now our correlation coefficient, r, is equal to, in parentheses, the sum of x times y minus n, which in this case is seven individuals, times the average number of hours spent watching television, times the average weight, close parentheses, divided by the square root, and I'll add another parentheses here because we have multiple terms, the sum of squared x scores minus n, which again is 7, times our mean squared times, in parentheses, the sum of our squared y terms minus 7 or n times our average weight squared. And I'll close that parentheses and then close the square root parentheses as well. Again, you'll see that we end up with an r value of positive 0.98. The final step is to determine whether or not this r value is significant. Your textbook provides a formula for determining this using the t statistic. However, your book also provides, in table f on page 475, critical values of r at the 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 levels of significance, and this is much easier than calculating a t-statistic. The only additional piece of information we need is the degrees of freedom. For correlation, the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 2, where n is the number of pairs of scores, or the number of individuals that we have data on. In this case, our n is 7. For each of these seven individuals, we know the number of hours they spend watching TV and their weight. And so our degrees of freedom is equal to 7, or our n, minus 2, or 5. Using the table, we can see that for 5 degrees of freedom, at the 0 0.05 level of significance, our critical value of r is 0.7545. Since our calculated r, 0.98, is greater than our critical value of 0.75, this correlation is significant. So we can say that there is a strong positive correlation between number of hours spent watching television and weight in the general population.